Hey everyone, in today's video we're getting a first look at the newly released Nuclear War Simulator. It's primarily an educational tool as well as a simulation modeling tool. But before we get started, there's a few things we need to consider. One, I received this product for free from Slytherin. That means the mechanics I like and the mechanics I don't like do not weigh as heavily upon me. Two, we'll be using this game in the future in conjunction with Command Modern Operations as well as Flashpoint Campaign Southern Storm. Throughout this video, I'll talk about how we'll integrate this nuclear war simulation tool into those games. Three, I'm going to link a link down below that's going to take you to the Princeton Strategic Global Studies page where they talk about Plan A and how they're using nuclear war simulator in their current model. So this can be both used militarily as well as on the civilian side. And when we talk about command modern operations, we'll talk about launching strategic nuclear missiles at fortified positions in the Ukraine. So like Bakhmut over here that we have. So if we come up here, we can see that I placed a military base. If I get close enough, you'll see the blue. That's Bakhmut. I'm, I'm, I'm going to pronounce that really terribly. I also placed a few civilians as well as military personnel around that. Down here, you're going to see we have an Akula class. If I cover highlight it submarine that is armed with 200 kiloton nuclear strategic warheads and they will be launching one at this strategic military location right we want to break the siege and allow the russian forces to secure this area this is how we're going to be displaying this game or this simulation tool and how you can use it in command modern operations so what we did over here is we clicked on this unit placement tool and we selected our submarine and then we actually uploaded a Wikipedia link, well, our military base, from Wikipedia. So that's how we got a military base in this location. And then we also placed several individuals. I did change their names, and I can't really change too much about them. They're just either white males or females. They have their own names. And then I tried to provide them with both um, Ukraine and Russian names. I apologize. I just pulled these from Google. And then it gives us a little overview about them. We're going to go over that once we launch our warhead, okay? And then we zoom in. We can see where they're currently located at. And this is important. Obviously, what I would like this game is to add some military vehicles so we can kind of see some of the fallout, how it affects, like, tanks. So if I had, like, command modern operations pulled up right here and a battalion or company of tanks over here, some T-72s, I could see how that fallout and radiation and blast would affect that military infrastructure. I know this game just released and I'm already having like a wish list of things I want, but I feel like that's something that's really important. And then throughout this video, well, I'm going to go over these people. I've placed them in different types of structures. So we're going to see how the blast is going to affect them and affect them in the current structure that they have. Some, some of the Russians, Igor, for instance, is in a vehicle while Dmitry is also in a vehicle. So no one's really walking. So they do have some form of protection. Some people are in the basement. Some of the Ukrainians are and some are not. So those are all into consideration. So what we're going to do is we're going to launch our warhead. So we're gonna select our Akula class submarine. We're gonna go drag our cursor all the way up here. And we're gonna just get kinda of close because we wanna target. You don't have to get this close. And we're gonna select target. We're going to hover over this and we're just going to left click it. Then we're gonna hit execute. So if we zoom out, hopefully it executes. We're going to hit the play button because we're currently not playing. And we're going to speed it up to times 10. And then there goes our one strategic 200 kiloton nuclear ballistic missile. It's going to fly all the way to this location. We're going to watch it fly over to that location. We're already at a times 10 speed, I believe. Times 10. We could obviously go to times 100. There are a few other things like I'd like to discuss, like when the missile explodes at the current height, things like that. And I believe those are all things you can adjust in the simulation tool. So once that makes contact, I'm going to show you the fallout, the fire. We're going to take a look at a few other things. There's a lot of things in this tool that I haven't explored yet. This is mostly like a first look. All right. So there's our blast currently going off. And then we have our calculator over here. It's going to allow us to calculate the recent explosion. It's going to run our calculations right here. Ukraine, 73,000. I'm just going to close this for right now. And then I'm going to click out here to fallout dose because I feel like this is one of the more important things people are going to enjoy. And then as you see, a lot of these people have turned red. Some are orange. I believe one was green, but maybe some of the fallout has gotten to them at this point in time. And this is the current time, right? 23, 17, universal time. We're going to hit pause real quick. We're going to bring up our individuals, and we're going to see what's going on with them. 
So we click on Igor and we come over here to overview. He was the one driving in the car. It's going to tell us how he was eliminated, right? It's going to tell us his maximum dose of rads, his current dose. It's also going to tell us burns from thermal radiation, possibly killed by fires, and then injuries from flying debris or gra glass, right? And then here's a little chart under radiation as it spikes up and then goes back down. I'm not going to claim to be an expert in any of this, but as you saw in that chart, it's like rads per hour. So we have the time and then we have the dosage. So we had a massive spike probably at the explosion or like a few seconds after, followed by the time over hour. So we can check on Dimitri as well. He's currently over here, a bit southern of the blast. And he is currently burns from thermal, thermal radiation, as well as injuries from flying debris or glass. He was in a vehicle as well. And then obviously here's his current rad dosage. We're going to move to Alexander. And he is currently killed as well. Radiation sickness indicated, which was different, as well as killed by building collapse. He is a bit closer. He's actually in the main blast area. We can see his radiation over time. It did not fall as significantly as the other people, as our other people did. And then we're just going to work our way. He was in a two-story brick building, um, basically the same thing, it, just barely within outside of that main blast radius. Then we're going to check on some of our Ukrainians. So she's currently incapacitated, right? Radiation sickness indicator and burns and injuries from flying glass. She was in a three-story brick building in, in the center, mainly in the main blast zone. So you can see she's getting a lot of radiation. Then we're just going to work our way through the last of them. She was in a multi-story building, eliminated, crushed by building collapse, right? That was almost the dead center of the hit. So she's, she was in a multi-story building, Anastasia, and then Andre, our military man. He was killed by fires and main radiation sickness. So that's just how you can like place people, drop them, see how they're affected by the blast. And if we close this, let's say we like close this and we zoom real, real, real far out. We'll take a look at one of the scenarios here in a second. All right, here's our blast. Let's go over to the United States and let's talk about the spy balloon real quick because everyone's interested in that spy balloon. Let's say we were over Kansas City, right? This is where our main nuclear arsenal is. It's no big secret of Montana, North Dakota, Nebraska, all of that. But if we locate Manhattan, Kansas City, I believe the spy balloon navigated over here or even we could go to like the Carolinas, right? Where it was recently shot down. Down here, let's just go to Myrtle Beach. Myrtle Beach. Not really of strategic interest, but there is 49,000 people there. Let's say we wanted to just, just a single explosion, that that balloon was carrying some sort of nuclear warhead. Here we can choose a type of warhead, the amount of kilotons. So we could say like a 25 kiloton warhead, just a small little tactical munition, number of detonation ones, wind speed, things like that. And then we just click on Myrtle Beach. Real, real, real small area. Spy balloon drops a warhead right obviously this would have been yesterday we hit our calculator it's going to calculate our casualties 5,000 if it dropped a small little tactical warhead and then we can see some of the fallout and we click on that and are we clicking the right things probably not but that's perfectly fine that's kind of something that i wanted to show off here's our blast radius Here's our fallout. Here's the fires. Here's primarily the fires. Maybe there's just not that much fallout from a 25 kiloton. And then here's like our, let's turn off physical effects. Here's primarily where all the fires are going to take place. So if we were to place individual units down there or people, we could see how Myrtle Beach would be effective if that spy platoon, spy platoon, spy balloon dropped a 25 kilometer warhead. <laughs> and we can do the same thing over in, let's say, if I could find it, Kansas City, like a more... A bunch of hardened we don't really have individuals in certain buildings but we could add them if we wanted to like if we added one person clicked on this we say new person drop him dead center we name this one joey walker and we put him in a shelter right all the way at the top overview so he's currently in a mid-story reinforced concrete building top floor then we grab our single explosion we say we want something a bit bigger 200 more strategic right there drops dead center on joey walker Oh, we needed the play button. That's what's going on, too. We hit that calculator. Then we turn fires off. We can take a quick look. 77,000. Oh, it's still telling us Ukraine. 69,000 over here. Americans were destroyed or eliminated by that nuclear blast. Speed up. 
then we watch the thing go. We watch our fallout dosage. And we zoom really, really far out. We see how Joey's doing. Joey's in stable health. Kind of bugging out right now, but that's fine. I'm not going to start over this, this video. Then we come over here, we click on our main menu, and we load a scenario. So there's all kinds of scenarios that we can take a look at. So let's say we click on this early warning scenario. It just gives us a brief. The early warning system consists of two satellites in Molnia orbits and multiple radar stations. In case of U.S. attack, the missiles will be first detected by the satellites and later by radar stations. The signals are channeled through five command centers. If five command centers are destroyed, the warning signals will never be registered. The scenario can be used to find launch configurations that avoid detection or analysis the timing of analysis and analyze the timing of detection of the Russian reaction. So that's kind of how it will be used if you were like, oh, if I wanted to create something more. So let's go. So U.S. starts la launching all these warheads, right? Early warning, command centers. Russia launched nuclear weapons on warning of incoming attack, right? U.S. is really already significantly la launching warheads. We're watching all of those hit strategic locations. Russia's firing. I believe you can add features to like eliminate warheads or shoot them down, or we could also simulate that in command modern operations, right? And it looks like they really, really hate our strategic nuclear arsenal. Look at that. Absolute nightmare to be right there. We hit our calculator to see what's going on. It's going to be in calculating the dosage and the radiations and the fallout and the ca casualties, all of that. Once it's done, we'll take a look at it, and we'll take a look at some of our fallout doses or fires and things like that. All right, Russia suffered 1 million casualties while the U.S. suffered 1 million. We're going to close that. We're going to click this button right here. We're going to zoom right back in. We're going to check out our fires. We can check out our fallout dose, and now it's like right back up and running, which is fantastic. They really didn't like something over there. What's outside of Pol Portland? Poland. <laughs> so here we see that there's a massive, massive dose of radiation and fallout. So if we were to place like um, civilians or personnel, even South Dakota, all that fallout is going to cause long-term casualties. It's going to cause current casualties. It's going to put a strain on both civilian and military infrastructure. And it's something really, really important to consider in how you could use this tool. So how we'll be using this more in command modern operations when we simulate front lines in other areas or um, flashpoint campaigns because nuclear fallout, I mean, it's always a possibility. As you saw, we just detonated a small 25 kiloton warhead in North Carolina or South Carolina, Myrtle Beach. So that's going to come with consequences when our forces need to secure that objective. Are they going to push through that radiation? Are their vehicles hardened enough to survive radiation is it even worth capturing that objective or what does our fo our force look like after they were hit by a 25 kiloton are they still combat effective how long does that radiation take to take hold will any will that radiation sickness spread right because once they leave the battlefield they're going to infect other people or they're just going to be irradiated all things to consider it was just a small little demonstration of this game and i really hope you enjoyed it and that's how we'll be using it in the future and if you pick it up let me know down in the comments peace guys